Hello YouTube, how are you doing today? You know, when I was a young guy growing up in the early 1980s, I remember we used to go over to my neighbor's house and we would play a nice little old game called Dungeons and Dragons. And now, it's been a long time since the original Dungeons and Dragons came out. And now, of course, I've grown up. I own a hobby shop called Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And now, like behind me here, we sell 5th edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. But you know, going all the way back in the past, what got me started with all this was the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Now, like I said, I grew up in the early 80s, was born in the 70s, and this was all coming in new at the time when I was young. And I remember uh, a lot of kids at school, they picked up this. We had Dragon Magazine, you know, all this sort of stuff. Now, I wasn't really heavily into Dungeons and Dragons, but I had a neighbor and he used to be quite in on it. He made great stories and everything. We played adventures. We also played James Bond, the role playing game, which is really cool. But, you know, us all being young and uh, whatnot, I don't think we really followed the rules too well or even knew the rules or understood them all and all of that sort of thing. And I know now there's sort of like this flashback into playing original role-playing games, discovering like, hey, what was going on in 1979 with Dungeons & Dragons as opposed to what I can buy now? And a lot of people are actually kind of going back to the nostalgia scene with um, role-playing games in general. So what I thought I'd do is start to make a video series where I'm going to actually read to you the old Dungeon Master Handbook. So tonight we are going to start with Gary Gygax and his introduction, as well as a little bit on the... Well, actually it's going to be the preface, the introduction, and the little blip on the game itself. And then in future videos I plan to unleash more content based on what's going on in this book. So for now, let's go down and open up this. This is a nice reproduction version of the original. And let's see what's inside. And now we hearken all the way back to the dungeon of 1979, where we check out a reproduction of the Dungeon Master Guide for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons by Gary Gygax. This, of course, is a reprint that came out not too long ago, but the original 1979 book would look like this. So now we'll just open up the cover of our nice limited edition reproduction. You can see they give you this nice bookmark here. I'll just move that out of the way. So here we go, the front page. And this is basically what it would look like in 79. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And here we have this beautiful illustration of a unicorn. This special reference work. Can't really read the name of the artist. Dungeon Master Guide, a compiled volume of information primarily used by Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game referees, including combat tables, monster lists, and encounters, treasure and magic tables, and descriptions, random dungeon generation, random wilderness terrain generation, suggestions on game mastering, and more by Gary Gygax. Now this book came out after the original Dungeons & Dragons, just to help people in tournaments, and much more. Illustrations by David C. Sutherland III, which I guess this is his signature. D.A. Trampier, Darlene Picoul, Will McLean, David S. LaForce, Errol Otis, cover by David C. Sutherland III. All characters in this book are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This book is protected under the copyright laws of the United States of America. Any reproduction of unauthorized use of the material or artwork contained herein is prohibited without the express written permission of Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Published by Wizards of the Coast, LLC, Hasbro SA, represented by Hasbro Europe, Stockley Park. Uh, Stockley Park. UK, Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeon Master's Guide, and all other Wizards titles, Wizards of the Coast, and their respective logos are trademarks of Wizard of the Coast LLC in the United States and other countries. 
All Wizards of the Coast characters and their distinctive likeness are property of Wizards of the Coast LLC, printed in the USA, 2012 Wizards of the Coast LLC. ISBN number... No, I won't get that crazy. Anyway, so... Now, here is the original foreword by Gary Gygax. And keep in mind, I'm reading sideways. You're seeing this up and down as it should be. Forward. Is dungeon mastering an art or a science? An interesting question. If you consider the pure creative aspect of sharing or starting from scratch, the personal touch of individual flair that goes into preparing and running a unique campaign, or the particular style of modern moderating a game adventure, then dungeon mastering may indeed be thought of as an art. If you consider the aspect of its experimentation, the painstaking effort of preparation and attention to detail, and the continuing search for new ideas and approaches, then dungeon mastering is perhaps more like a science, not always exacting in literal sense, but exacting in ter terms of what is required to do the job well. Esoteric questions aside, one thing is for certain, dungeon mastering Dungeon mastering is, above all, a labor of love. It is demanding, time-consuming, and certainly not a task to be undertaken lightly. The sheer bulk of the book you hold in your hand will tell you that. But, as all DMs know, the rewards are great. An endless challenge to the imagination and intellect. An enjoyable pastime to fill many hours with fantastic and often unpredictable happenings and an opportunity to watch a story unfold and a grand idea to grow and flourish. The imagination knows no bounds, and the possibilities of the game of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons are just as limitless. Who can say what awaits each player except a cornucopia of fantasy and heroic event adventure? So much is waiting indeed. This book holds much in store for you as DM. It's it is your primary tool in constructing your own world or milieu. It contains a wealth of material and combined with the other works of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Monster Manual and Player's Handbook, gives you all the information you need to play AD&D. But as always, one more thing is needed, your imagination. Use the written material as your foundation and inspiration. Then explore the creative possibilities you have in your own mind to make your game something special. Dungeon mastering itself is no easy undertaking, to be sure. But dungeon mastering, well, is doubly difficult. There are few game masters around who are so superb in their conduct of play that they could disdain the opportunity to improve themselves in some way. Fortunately, this work addresses the matter at length and gives you plenty of suggestions on all aspects of dungeon mastering, as well as some of the finer points, in order to help you improve your own efforts. Take heed and always endeavor to make the game the best it can be and all that it can be. Mike Carr, TRS Games and Rules Editor, 16th of May, 1979. So now we just move and take a look at all our table of contents. And maybe I'll just zoom in here a bit. There we go. Preface, credits, introduction, the game, approaches to playing advanced Dungeons and Dragons, dice, use of miniature figures, Aids to playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if I'll read all these, actually. <laughs> but you can see by the table of contents here, there this is a pretty heavy-duty book. And in fact, goes on quite a bit until we get to appendices, which also goes for quite a bit. And just zoom back a little. And then we get it into our tables and charts and all the pages that they are laid out on. What I intend to do in this series is to, of course, read this entire book and break it up into little videos. So now we get another preface here, or the actual preface. And this preface, of course, is written by Gary Gygax. Yes. Preface. What follows herein is strictly for the eyes of you, the campaign referee. As the creator and ultimate authority in re your respective game, this work is written as one dungeon master equal to another. Pr 
pronouncements there may be, but they are not from on high, as respects your game. Dictums are given for the sake of the game only, for if Advanced Dungeons & Dragons is to survive and grow, it must have some degree of uniformity, a familiarity of method and procedure from campaign to campaign within the whole. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons is more than a framework around which individual DMs construct their respective milieu. It is above all a set of boundaries for all of the worlds devised by referees everywhere. These boundaries are broad and spacious, and there are numerous areas where they are so vague and amphorious as to make them nearly non-existent, but they are there nonetheless. When you build your campaign, you will tailor it to suit your personal tastes. In the heat of play, it will slowly evolve into a compound of your personality and those of your better participants, a superior ally. Alloy. Pardon me. And as long as your campaign remains viable, it will continue a slow process of change and growth. In this lies a great danger, however. The system and parameters combined in the whole of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons are based on a great deal of knowledge, experience, gained through discussion, play, testing, questioning, and, hopefully, personal insight. Limitations, check balances and all the rest are placed into the system in order to assure that what is based thereon will be a superior campaign, a campaign which offers the most interesting play possibilities to the greatest number of participants for fledging for the longest period of time possible. You as referee will have to devolve countless hours of real effort in order to produce just a fledging com campaign vis a background for the whole some small village or town, and a reasoned series of dungeon levels, the lot of which must be suitable for elaboration and expansion on a periodic basis. To obtain real satisfaction from such effort, you must have participants who will make use of your creations. Players to learn the wonders and face the perils you have de devised for them, if it is all too plain, and too easy, the players will quickly lose interest, and your effort will prove to have been in vain. Likewise, if the campaign is too difficult, players will quickly become discouraged and lose interest in a game where they are always the butt. Again, your labors will have been for naught. These facts are of prime importance for the game where they... Oh, each... Pardon me. Each facts are of prime importance, for they underline many rules. Remember, I'm reading this sideways. <laughs> Naturally, everything possible cannot be included in the whole of this work. As a participant in the game, I would not care to have anyone telling me exactly what must go into a campaign, and how it must be handled. If so, why not play some game, like chess? As the author, I also realize that there are limits to my creativity and imagination. Others will think of things I didn't, and devise things beyond my capability. As an active dungeon master, I kept us a careful watch for things which would tend to complicate matters without improving them. Systems devised seemingly to make the game drag for the players. Rules which tend to complicate matters without improving them. Systems devised seemingly to make the game drag for players. Rules which lessened the fantastic and unexpected in favor of the mundane and ordinary. As if that were not enough hats to wear, I also wore that of a publisher, watching the work so as to make sure that it did not grow so large and to become unmanageable uh, cost-wise. None, none of this was compromised per se, but the process was most certainly refining of what should be lo what logically what should logically be pressed in the system returning again to the framework aspect of advanced dungeons and dragons what is aimed at is a universe into which similar campaigns and parallel worlds can be placed with certain uniformity of systems and laws players will be able to move from one campaign to another and know at least the elemental principles which govern the new milieu for some 
Oh, for all milieu will have certain but not necessarily the same laws in common. Character races and classes will be nearly the same. Character ability scores will have the identical meaning, or nearly so. Magic spells will function in a certain manner, regardless of which world they, the player is functioning in. Magic devices will certainly vary, but their principles will be similar, regardless of which world the player is functioning in. Magic devices certainly vary, but their principles will be similar. This uniformity will help not only players, it will enable DMs to carry on a meaningful dialogue and exchange of useful information. It might also eventually lead to grand tournaments wherein persons from any part of the USA, or the world for that matter, can compete for accolades. The danger of a mutable system is that you or your players will go too far in some undesirable direction and end up with a short-lived campaign. Participants will always be pushing for a game which allows them to become strong and powerful far too quickly. Each will attempt to take the game out of your hands and mold it to his or her own ends. To satisfy this natural desire is to issue a death warrant to a campaign, for it will either be a one-player affair or the players will desert en masse for something more challenging and equitable. Similarly, you must avoid the tendency to drift into areas foreign to the game as a whole. Such campaigns become so strange as to be no longer a D&D. They are isolated and will usually wither. Variation and difference are desirable but both should be kept within the boundaries of the overall system. Imaginative and creative addition can most certainly be included. That's why nebulous areas have been built into the game. Keep such individuality in perspective by developing a unique and detailed world based on the rules of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. No two campaigns will ever be the same, but all will have the common ground necessary for maintaining the whole as a viable entity. Turn the page here. An uh, entity which you and your players can communicate with the many thousands of others who also find swords and sorcery role playing an amusing and enjoyable pastime. As this book is the exclusive precedent of the DM, you must view any non DM player possessing it as something less than worthy of honorable death. Peeping players there, there will undoubtedly be, but they are simply lessening their own enjoyment of the game by taking away some of the sense of wonder that otherwise arises from a game which has rules hidden from the, play, from the participants. It is in your interests and theirs to discourage possession of this book by players. If any of your participants do read herein, it is suggested that you assess them a heavy fee for consulting sages and other sources of information not normally attainable by the inhabitants of your milieu. If they express knowledge which could only be garnered by consulting these pages, a magic item or two can be taken as payment. Insufficient, but perhaps it will tend to discourage such actions. I sincerely hope that you find this new system to your taste and enjoy it. The material is herein, but only you can construct the masterpiece from it. Your personal campaign, which will bring hundreds of hours of fun and excitement to many eager players. Masterful dungeoning to you. Credits and Acknowledgements the following is an alphabetical list of all those persons who in some way contributed to the formation of this work. Naturally, each did not make an identical contribution, and those with whom I normally play AD&D, &D, as well as those kind enough to review the initial manuscript, had more influence and, in and engendered more ideas than did those others with whom I do not have the privilege of continued close association or contact. Nonetheless, all are here within are nonetheless all are herewith credited and thanked uh, and thanked. Where did I lose here? And thanked Brian Bloom, Mike Carr, Sean Clearly, Jean Louis Fizon, 
Ernie the well-known barbarian Gygax, Luke Gygax, Al Hammock, Neil Healy, Tom Holsinger, Harold Johnson, Timothy Jones, Jim Cask, uh, sorry, Tim Cask, Rick Krebs, Len Lakofka, Jeff Leeson, Steve Marsh, Shar Niebling, Will Niebling, John Pickens, Gregory Wren, John Sapeniza, Lawrence Schlick, Doug Schwartz, Doug Schwiegman, uh, Dennis Sister, Jack Vance, James M. Ward, Jean, Jean Wells, and Skip Williams. Sorry if I pronounced some of these names wrong. I am reading this sideways. <laughs> also to be thanked are the uncontro uh, uncontrolled. Also to be thanked are those uncounted DMs and players who have been eager to improve adventure gaming and have spent their valuable time to give me the benefit of their thinking by letter or through personal contact at conventions. Your efforts to find ways to do things better, to point out ambiguities or flaws, and general desire to aid and encourage me are appreciated. Bob... Bob B... Oh, Bob Bleedso of Judges Guild must also be given credit. He and his associates have certainly contributed to the overall improvement of fantasy adventure gaming, making the undertaking easier and encouraging still more interest in role-playing. Finally, no list of credits would be complete unless I especially thank the artists who have been so much help with the entire compilation of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. These artists are Dave Sutherland and Dave Tramper, uh, Trampier. Pardon me. Thank you, gentlemen. As if by chance I have neglected anyone, please forgive me, as the task of finishing the Dungeon Master Guide has taken some two years, and during that time I have read hundreds of pages of suggestions, done thousands of pages of res researching, and written about 1,200 pages of manuscript. A job begun in 1976, often interrupted, has at last been completed. Notes made months or years ago have a way of getting lost in the last minute rush of the finish at the finish then there's gary gygax's signature there introduction the format of this book is simple and straightforward the first sections pertain to material contained in the player's handbook and each pertinent section is in corresponding order much information was purposely omitted from the later work, as it is data which would not normally be known, at least initially, to a person of the nature which this game presupposes, i.e. an adventurer in a world of swords and sorcery. It is incumbent upon all DMs to be thoroughly conversant with the player's handbook, and at the same time you must also know the additional information which is given in this volume, for it rounds out and completes the whole. While players will know what they must decide upon an alignment, for example, you, the DM, will further know that each and every action they take will be mentally recorded by you. And at Adventure's End, you will secretly note any player character movement on the alignment graph. After the material which pertains directly to the player's handbook comes the information which supplements and augments. There is a large section which lists and explains the numerous magical items. There are sections on the development of the campaign milieu, dungeon design, random creation of wilderness and dungeon levels, and the development of non-player characters. In fact, what I have attempted is to cram everything vital to the game into this book, so that you will be as completely equipped as possible to face the ravenous packs of players lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce upon the unwary referee and devour him or her at the first opportunity. Thus, besides the system, I have made every effort to give the reasoning and justification for the game. Of course, the ultimate reasoning and justification is a playable and interesting game, and how much rationalization can actually go into a fantasy game? There is some, at least, as you will see, for if the game is fantasy, there is a basis for much of what is contained herein, even though it be firmly grounded on worlds of make-believe. And while there are no optionals for the major system of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, for un uniformity of rules and procedures from game to game campaign to campaign is stressed. 
There are plenty of areas where your own creativity and imagination are not bound by the parameters of the game system. These are sections where only a few hints and suggestions are given, and the rest is left for the DM. There is so much that could have been included herein that a major part of authorizing this volume was deciding what would be omitted. The criterion was usefulness. First came material, which was absolutely vital to play, then came the inclusion of what would be the most helpful to you, and finally, interesting items of broad appeal, which tend to improve the flavor of a campaign were sifted into the work. Material included was written with an eye toward playability and expedition. The fun of the game is action and drama. The challenge of problem solving is secondary. Long and drawn out operations by the referee irritate the players. More realistic combat systems could certainly have been included here, but they have no real part in a game for a group of players having an exciting adventure. If you will do your best to keep the excitement level of your games at a peak, you will be doing yourself and your participants a favor which will be evident when the players keep coming back for more. The final word, then, is the game. Read how and why the system is as it is. Follow the parameters and then cut portions as needed to maintain excitement. For example, the rules call for wandering monsters, but these can be not only irritating, if not deadly, but the appearance of such can actually spoil a game by interfering with an orderly expedition. You have set up an area full of clever tricks and traps, populated it with well-thought-out creature complexes, given clues about it to pique players' interest, and the group has worked hard to supply themselves with everything by way of information and equipment they will need to face and overcome the imagined perils. They are gathered together and eager to spend an enjoyable evening playing their favorite game, with the expectation of going to a strange new area and doing their best to triumph. They are willing to accept the hazards of the dice, be it loss of items, wounding, instant insanity, disease, death, as long as the process is exciting. But lo! Every time you throw the monster die, a wandering nasty is indicated, and the party's strength is spent trying to fight their way into the area. Spells expended, battered and wounded, the characters trek back to their base. Expectations have been dashed, and probably interest too, by random chance. Rather than spoil such an otherwise enjoyable time, omit the wandering monsters indicated by the die. No, don't allow the party to kill them easily or escape unnaturally, for that goes contrary to the major precepts of the game. Wandering monsters, however, are included for two reasons, as is explained in the section about them. If a party deserves to have these beasties inflicted upon them, then that is another matter. But in the example above, it is assumed that they are doing everything possible to travel quickly and quietly to their planned destination. If your work as a DM has been sufficient, the players will have all they can handle upon arrival. So let them get there. Give them a chance. The game is the thing, and certain rules can be distorted or disregarded altogether in favor of play. Know the game systems, and you will know how and when to take upon yourself the ultimate power. To become the final arbiter rather than the interpreter of the rules can be a difficult and demanding task, and it cannot be undertaken lightly, for your players expect to play this game, not one made up on the spot. By the same token, they are playing the game the way you, their DM, imagines and creates it. Remembering that the game is greater than its parts, and knowing all of the parts, you will have overcome the greater part of the challenge of being a referee. Being a true DM requires cleverness and imagination, which no set of rule books can bestow. Seeing that you were clever enough to buy this volume, and you have enough imagination to desire to become the maker of a fantasy world, you are almost there already. Read and become familiar with the contents of this work, and the one written for players. Learn your monsters and spice things up with some pathions of super-powerful beings. Then put your judging and refereeing ability into the creation of your own personal milieu, and you have donned the mantle of the Dungeon Master. Welcome to the exalted ranks of the overworked and harassed, whose cleverness and imagination are all too often unappreciated by the cloddish characters, whose only thoughts in life is to loot, pillage, slay, and who fail to appreciate the hours of preparation which went into the creation of what they aim to destroy as cheaply and quickly as possible. <laughs> as a DM, you must live by the immortal words of the sage who said, Never give a sucker an even break. 
P.T. Barton. Also, don't be a sucker for your players, for you'd better be sure they follow sage advice too. As a DM, you have to prove in every game that you are still the best. This book is dedicated to helping to assure that you are. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? No random monsters. And then uh, here you've got to actually more or less play against your players. Um, interesting from Gary Gygax. Uh, let me know down in the blah blah. The game. Approaches to playing advanced Dungeons and Dragons. A few brief words are necessary to ensure that the reader has actually obtained a game form which he or she desires. Of the two approaches to hobby games today, one is best defined as the Realism Simulation School, and the other as the Game School. AD&D is assuredly an inher adherent of the later school. It does not stress any realism, in the author's opinion, an absurd effort at best considering the topic. It does little to attempt to simulate anything either. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons is first and foremost a game for the fun and enjoyment of those who seek to use imagination and creativity. This is not to say that where it does not interfere with the flow of the game that the highest degree of realism hasn't been attempted, but neither is a serious approach to play discouraged. In all cases, however, the reader should understand that AD&D is designed to be an amusing and diverting pastime, something which can fill a few hours or consume endless days, as a participant desire, but in no case something to be taken too seriously. For fun, excitement, and captivating fantasy, AD&D is unsurpassed. As a realistic simulation of things from the realm of make-believe, or even as a reflection of medieval or ancient warfare, Warfare, or culture, or society, it can be deemed only a dismal failure. Readers who seek the later must search elsewhere. Those who desire to create and populate imaginary worlds with larger-than-life heroes and villains, who seek relaxation with a fascinating game, and who generally believe games should be fun, not work, will hopefully find this system to their tastes. Well, I hope you enjoyed that read-through of the preface, introduction, and beginning of the game. Now, next week, we will be going back to this book, and we'll be checking out a great section on dice. Gary Gygax put in a lot of time and effort to help us to understand how dice work, percentages, and other great roles and things. I know it may not be the hot topic of <laughs> a lot of us out there, but it is very interesting and fascinating, and actually, this is pretty much the only time you actually get an understanding of what the dice are all about. So, I hope you can join us next time for that one. In the meantime, if you enjoy these great videos or want to see more of this series coming up, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Destroy that notification bell and smash the like button so that this video can get way up there. It can level up <laughs> because right now this is a first level video. And I hope with enough experience I can become second level and all the rest. Now I'm going to le leave a link to our Dungeons and Dragons section of our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca <laughs> right down there in the doodly-doo. If you have any questions or answers, I always like answers more than questions because then it tells me what I'm doing. Ha! You can leave that down in the blah blah. So anyway, until next time, everybody, don't forget to check out your old books and whatnot, and happy adventuring. <laughs>